Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope all of you can uh, hear me loud and clear. So, um, well, uh, good evening to all of you. And I, uh, uh, I am uh, going to speak about composition and probably a, probably a few tips on guitar playing. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, guitar playing, uh, just um, anyways, in this lockdown, I hope you people are doing well. Everybody is taking care of themselves. I'm sure this is a learning, care, uh, learning curve for all of us. And uh, well, I, it's, it's a lot of learning. I'm, I'm sure you, each one of you have their own learnings uh, from this lockdown. For me, there has been a major, major uh, learning. That is, uh, I've realized that, um, you know, utensils multiply. No matter how many <laughs> utensils you've washed, you will still see somewhere, you know, something popping out that, you know, you missed me out. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, been uh, definitely um, a lot of learning. And uh, well, to begin with, uh, let me just tell you about uh, holding the guitar. I'm not going that, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, not, not really starting, but there is one particular tip that I want to give because a lot of people probably do not know this. One is to hold the guitar that I, the way I'm holding. So, uh, this is uh, the typical way that most people hold the guitar, especially in rock and uh, uh, country music and uh, various things. But there is another way, which uh, is the classical way of uh, holding the guitar. And that is basically holding the guitar in between the two legs with your left leg kind of uh, elevated. And uh, this, this has an advantage that probably very few people know, is that the reach of your fingers is much, much more along the fretboard because if I'm holding it like this, I can actually just do. So. So, and also uh, what happens is if you're holding it like this, when you're doing some hammering. Because you are being able to hammer from a higher distance from the fretboard. Whereas if you're holding the guitar like this, your reach becomes much, much more limited. I can't reach up to here because it becomes a bit difficult and I'll have to really uh, bend forward to do this. So it is much, much easier to do that when you are doing playing it like this. So these are a couple of things that uh, can be of help. So that is one. And as and when I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the compositions, uh, I will probably keep giving certain tips as to how to go about um, playing certain riffs. So now let's talk about composition. Composition is something which I believe uh, has to have a structure. Because if you do not have a structure, then you do not have an identity for the composition. The composition, uh, well, uh, it, it, will, uh, it may well be a composition without any beat pattern, but there has to be a, uh, a structure because if you do not have a structure, it is more of a free jam or a free improvisation that can continue for hours, but people would not remember exactly what they had heard. So that is one. And this whole thing about creativity, I think uh, this word creativity has been used very fluidly. Uh, in recent times, and when I say recent times, probably a couple of decades, if not more. Uh, there is a fine difference between application and actual creation. When you have learned a particular skill, then you can apply that skill to generate certain moods and certain ways to to uh, 
to, to cater to probably your clients or people who have asked you to uh, compose something. So, uh, uh, but when a composition comes from within, and um, uh, that probably comes after a lot and lot of uh, practice, because uh, because inherently you have you know that by doing various things with your uh, guitar or any instrument, or the scales that you are working on, or the beat patterns that you are working on, uh, you can actually uh, generate certain moods, and the compositions kind of emerge from there. Uh, whereas there have been compositions which I have gone through, which have come from nowhere. You know, one day I've woken up in the morning and I've played a complete composition. And it has happened with compositions like Melancholic Ecstasy, Torrent, uh, probably Euphoria. You can embellish it even further uh, with your skills. Um, uh, but the basic composition, which is which I call actual creativity, is something that you cannot possibly pinpoint where is it coming from. Um, so uh, that is there. Uh, on top of that, uh, now when you when I say that there is a structure, uh, I personally believe that there cannot be a formula because we are expressing our emotions, right? And our emotions do not know any formula. And um, Although, although in various different uh, kinds of music, there seem to be certain formula uh, or formulae that have been brought in, say in Western classical music, uh, which was basically developed in Italy. And uh, you have different movements and for different kinds of compositions. So if you are um, uh, composing a symphony, the rule is that you have to have four movements, at least four movements, right? And if you are uh, composing a concerto, then uh, you have to be, uh, have at least three movements. Now, these are things which are now being challenged because there are, there are classical musicians from all over the world who are now challenging why should my symphony have to have those four uh, uh, movements. In the same way, uh, there has been uh, uh, another way of going about it, which has probably come from country music or folk music. Um, not always, but uh, uh, another way of uh, uh, formulating a composition is to have the verse chorus formula. You know, you have a mukra and then you have a verse, antara. And therefore, you keep repeating the, uh, the, the chorus after each verse and then you have, have uh, another verse with different words. In it. So, but, but if you really want to go into the depths of compositions, then one should be able to uh, break out of those shackles. And I do say that these are shackles because uh, uh, that is what actually um, binds you down from expressing your inner self. Right. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is that I am going to take a composition of mine, uh, which is a long composition, which uh, I've played in two different setups, uh, which is both of them are there uh, on YouTube. Uh, this, this piece is called the Iceberg Project. Now, Iceberg Project, uh, I played it with uh, Quartet uh, the first time that I played it. And uh, that was with another guitar player. Uh, a percussionist who first played the kahun and then he switched to the tabla and uh, there was a cello, right? And the second time that I have actually uh, played it and it is there on YouTube again, there are certain live performances which are there, which I do not know where to find them. But I'm sure if you if you go and search on YouTube, you should be able to find a few more of uh, these renditions. Uh, so Iceberg Project is something which I had composed quite some time back, but then it uh, took a nice form when a friend of mine called Rachna Yadav, who is a Kathak dancer, and she said that she wanted me to compose music for a particular uh, uh, dance that she was composing. Okay, I can call it, uh, uh, and uh, what she called it was, um, 
was called uh, the name will come uh, to me swaraha swaraha so uh, she asked me to do this so i kind of uh, uh, changed it around for uh, you know what was required for her composition and um, and therefore i recorded it in the studio and then i gave it to her so it was not really played live when the dance was going on it was a uh, recorded thing that played while they danced so uh, that was the first time it got recorded and people got to hear it in uh, the places where she performed and uh, then uh, i did it because uh, big band theory akshay oja approached me that why don't we do something i said let me do this live for you and so the quartet came into being and then finally i did it as a trio with melani and nandit melani playing the piano and nandit playing the drums so um uh, without wasting any more time let me just go ahead and uh, talk more about the composition now. uh i it is going to get a bit technical i've been told that quite a few students of music have uh, uh, joined into this program and therefore i will go a bit technical at times so uh, this composition initially starts off now whoever is trying to you know see what I'm doing on the guitar um and if they are tuned to uh, the concert pitch then they might have a bit of a problem because i tune my guitar one whole note low and if they are if they see me playing an e minor for them it is actually a d minor okay so this e minor will be a d minor now if you want to follow what i am doing on your guitars then then i would uh, suggest quickly tune your guitar down by one whole note that's two semitones and bring your e to a d your a to uh, a will become g so uh, that's how you just tune the whole uh, this thing otherwise the tuning of my guitar is exactly like any other guitar apart from the fact that it is tuned one whole note low so the first part there are two parts of this particular composition and you'll see that the structure is extremely different from a verse chorus uh, this thing and uh, in western classical when they say movements four different movements which are played separately i think this particular piece has lots of movements and i think this is going to sound extremely beautiful with a full orchestra uh but as of now uh, i have been able to do it with a quartet and a uh, uh, trio so the first part uh of this composition is basically on my e minor which is the concert pitch d minor and it starts off with an ala okay without a beat and it slowly develops so i'm going to just play the ala and then i i will uh, i will also stop and tell you, you know where the other instruments are also taking uh and uh, improvising and then i take off again so the beginning of this piece uh goes like this the notes that i am playing is basically the the first first be my e your d and uh, the uh, then uh, the second note which is uh, my f sharp okay for you it will be the g sharp no sorry uh, e uh, so basically uh, uh, the first note second note the pure second note the flattened third then four fifth is always fifth flatten sixth then seven uh yeah and then you come to the root note again okay and the seventh is also flattened by the way so we have 
the second uh, the third note is a flattened note the sixth note is flattened no sixth is actually pure and the seventh is flat so instrument and this time the last time that I played it was Melanie who did his, uh, her improvisations and then I continued doing my style. amount of improvisation and Now, uh, the reason my compositions keep changing within the composition and it goes from one part to the other, because I too get bored. Now, by now, I'm bored of doing my ala, and therefore I have to come to a beat pattern. So when I come to the beat pattern, it comes <coughs> very with a very, very simple riff, and it go goes... I'm doing now. This is, this is coming to the guitar playing uh, uh, bit. I'm, I'm I'm basically playing the open note, the last string. Okay, the open note, and I'm hammering the uh, the the one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh fret. So this is how now. The, the, this is very interesting. How this particular uh, riff came about. While I was developing this uh, uh, composition, Sudhi, who sings in my band, Sudhi Rikari, he was sitting with another guitar. Obviously, he does not play the guitar. <coughs> He's very good with the keys, especially the harmonium. Uh, so he he started doing this because uh, with the beat pattern, he was holding the guitar actually like this. And he, that this is lovely you know the moment he was doing that with whatever i was doing so this became the main riff to begin the beat pattern so so this 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 continues now the first bit it is going to continue to a crescendo which will all be on the i'm not going to change any notes those seven notes that i played for you i'm not going to change but it is going to slowly develop into a crescendo so initially there is no drums so this starts off On the piano, Melanie plays um, uh, a melody which is similar to this, but she plays it with a lot more uh, notes and chords. So it goes. Uh, Just to remind you that you're in the same composition, these motifs will come back you know, later on. Maybe in a slightly different way, but you will be able to figure out that this is still the same composition. Right. So, so after she's played this... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
didn't quite play uh, perfectly. But you know, when you're not in a flow, I'm I'm breaking my composition each time. Uh, then it's difficult to maintain the flow. But anyway, so out here I have played another motif, which will again get repeated to, towards the end. Uh, when I come to this part of the motif, the uh, the piano starts, uh, or whichever other instrument is playing with me, starts playing uh, a faster rhythm, uh, faster not in terms of tempo, but she doubles up the number of notes in the same time. So when I'm playing this, last time that I'm playing this, she starts. I'm still on this. Uh, I want to join. with the piano right so once this is it has reached this last bit from here on the drums comes in and drums comes in at uh, a normal uh, pace it will go into double time at a later uh, this thing within the same session of this e minor section so when i'm doing this last bit and the piano does the same thing so take it to a crescendo. So while I'm taking the solo piece, the moment I start going faster, <coughs> when I'm saying faster, that means I'm going to double it. Okay, not faster in tempo. Right. So, um, so, vibration of the sound is making the camera tremble. I really won't be able to help much, but let me see. Okay, so um, so I come to a crescendo. Now the fact that I'm playing with other instrumentalists and especially um, uh, another uh, uh, instrument like piano or a cello, I have to fix these pieces. Otherwise, I can actually take this particular uh, faster part much, much, uh, much longer. So I can. And 
at the end that the sender will... once the beat pattern starts, so that there is a kind of resemblance that this is the same composition. So, So I'll start off with a major and then I will play certain notes which are still there from the minor uh, this thing and slowly start changing the notes in a way that it not only is going to uh, emotionally be, um, uh, it touches you and, um, uh, and it does not feel odd. So I start. Uh, in a completely a different way. So now I'm going to bring in a particular pattern, which is a 10-beat pattern. 
Now, when you use a 10 beat pattern in a 4 beat pattern, so it if you play it twice, it ends up after the on the 21st beat, you come to the first again. That means five times four. So if I am going to play. Really, a double beat. The double beat will come uh, much, much later. This kind of a beat pattern comes in. Uh, uh, um, so, and now I'm being able to play an F chord along with the e, e major because I have brought in the flattened second. Right. So, uh, so I'm again going to start from there and continue with this particular piece. Now. Uh, this piece leads into another motive, okay, which is See the similarity, it is quite similar, but only thing the beat patterns are different. Otherwise, the improvisations can continue for a long, long, long time. But it is much, much better to, you know, keep reminding the audience that this is where I am and this is where I still am. It is still the same composition. Right. So this, this thing continues. Now that I have come on to the uh, flattened, uh, uh, flattened second, now I need to go back. And, and go back to the original part, okay, go back to a minor. So first I have to get out of the flattened fourth, uh, sorry, flattened second. So uh, how do I go about it? So the next piece of improvisation will slowly take it there. So. Um, <laughs> So that it gives me a chance to go to uh, uh, the normal second. Uh, 
So now uh, the way I'm playing this is again a technique is hammering. So I'm taking the second string. So I'm taking this particular note, which is uh, my B, but it'll be A for you. So, and then I'm hammering these two notes. So now I'm coming slowly coming to the end of the major part. So I'm going to come back to the minor by repeating this same particular motif, just one whole note low. And the moment I do that, it gives, allows me to come back to the minor without sounding bad. So I'll do it. I don't know. I think uh, I thought that explaining all these things to you will mean uh, uh, something which I could uh, convey to all of you as to how a composition can be developed. 
And um, now I'm going to see exactly what are the questions coming in from various places and see how much I can actually answer these. Okay, so uh, let me see, uh, Viplav Vishal, you have jammed on guitar a lot with tabla. How different is it for a tabla player to play with a Western instrument uh, like guitar in comparison to Indian classical string instruments like sitar, veena? Okay, let me answer this question of Viplav. Uh, well, you know what? Beat pattern is beat pattern. Uh, and if the tabla is coming in uh, with a Western instrument, tabla has uh, you cannot play uh, a lot of Western, a lot of Western uh, um, uh, beat patterns in a way on the tabla that that it'll sound the same. So many a times, probably, uh, but 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 any any beat pattern a tabla player can play. A tabla player can play just about everything. Okay, because the kind of training that a tabla player has is uh, probably way 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 uh, greater than almost all uh, drummers. You see, uh, uh, the the culture of tabla has been there in India for for many 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 centuries, whereas the drums is probably not even 50 years old. Earlier, all the pieces of the drum kit used to be played uh, by different people, okay, and not together. So somebody had this brainwave and put them all together. So drums is not really a very, very old instrument, whereas the tabla has uh, uh, a culture of, I do not know how many, um, uh, prob probably uh, thousands of years. Uh, actually, no, tabla, uh, tabla was, uh, was invented by uh, Amir Khusro, but uh, the Pakhavaj was there before that. Uh, in Carnatic classical, there was a uh, Midhava. And um, so uh, I don't think it is going to be a problem for any tabla player to play with a Western instrument. And the fact that people do have played tabla with me, because my style of playing has to do a lot with uh, uh, Indian music, because my main influence has been Indian music both classical as well as folk. But I have been influenced by um, by, by uh, music from all over the world. So I, have, I don't think I will be able to uh, answer everything. Ingo, the shifting with the help of one full note down is awesome. OK. Uh, so there are some more questions which I've, I've been uh, sent uh, on WhatsApp. Somebody called JS has asked me, is professional training necessary to be able to compose well on guitar? <laughs> Firstly, I must make it very clear to you. Composition, to be able to compose, is something which cannot be taught. It is like uh, also when you are a painter, you can be a brilliant uh, painter technically. You can, you can teach a child or a person who is uh, a, a student of uh, painting how to draw a perfect line or, or how to do the perfect shading, you know, how to use colors and all those kind of things. But to be able to compose a beautiful picture is something which depends on the aesthetics of the people and how they have developed themselves as a personality. So composition is never, uh, nobody can teach composition. So that is something which you will have to imbibe on your own. And uh, therefore, uh, professional training, again, professional training cannot teach you composition. Professional teacher can make you a uh, very fine skilled musician. Right. But that does not mean uh, that your expressions are great or maybe it will be great. Uh, <clears throat> I have never learned music myself. So... Um, so this is a question which is probably not for me. I don't think, uh, even if you learn music, any form of art, I think it is always good to be able to break out of it also, all the rules that they have been given to you, because there are no rules in art. Right. Sanjay Balachandran, Sushmit, why do you tune one whole tone lower? Any specific reason? Yes, there is a reason behind this. I remember when I was in school, my father got me a guitar from Czechoslovakia. 
I, in those days, actually, I didn't even know how to tune properly, and uh, concept pitch was not there in my mind. I used to tune. I mean, uh, uh, relatively, I would tune uh, tune the E, the bass uh, E, and then uh, accordingly go ahead and tune the rest of the um, uh, strings. Now that uh, Czechoslovakian guitar, which is no longer Czechoslovakian right now, it's broken up. Uh, now Czech Republic and various other, uh, other countries. Uh, so that was actually a classical guitar, but it came fitted with uh, metal strings. Now, when it came fitted with metal strings, um, I do not know why they fitted metal strings to it. It was a beautiful guitar, but it warped within what a few months time. Uh, same thing happened to the next guitar that I had. It was an Indian guitar, uh, uh, but it warped. But then I decided with the extreme climate conditions in uh, uh, in Delhi, in, uh, in a place like Delhi, I had to tune my guitar slightly lower to uh, maintain the, uh, the, 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 the action of my guitar. And uh, that became a habit. And that has led to, uh, it has a different tone when you tune it lower and also I have also seen that it probably gives a little bit more sustain. Um, so on the whole, that is how it. Uh, um, I started tuning it one whole lot lower, and now it's become a habit. Now my fingers not, are not strong enough to take uh, thicker strings or uh, uh, tuning on the concert pitch. So then Soul Surfer is uh, somebody called Soul Surfer says, uh, where do you get the inspiration to create such beautiful melodies? Ah, well, well, thank you that you find them beautiful to begin with. Um, inspiration, I think, comes from being a human being. Inspiration comes from being uh, being able to touch people, not, not just physically, to, to, to be able to feel other people, to be able to feel a lot of good music and uh, so on and so forth. So inspiration is of all kinds. But uh, yeah, I think to be a good human being is a very important factor when you want to be a true musician or a true artist. And uh, to be able to feel people, to be able to relate to people in a very natural way. So that is something which definitely uh, adds to all that. And as far as beautiful melodies are concerned, it also depends on the aesthetic sense. And what you are finding beautiful, probably somebody else may not. Right. Uh, but thank you for at least appreciating my melodies. So, Ankur Sony, how to create a song. How to create a song, as I told you, there are various different, uh, some people have brought in formulae. I do not believe in formula. One is to just have a mukra, then you have the verses, and then you again have the chorus. You can uh, develop a song like that. Uh, but, but, that is following a, a, a formula, but you are restricting yourself uh, by doing so. So, again, how to create a song is something which I won't be able to answer in such a short time. Uh, it depends on a whole lot of things. Are you talking about a song which is instrumental? Are you talking about a song which has got lyrics? So it depends on a whole lot of things. And now if there are lyrics, then you will have to go by the feel of the lyrics and what kind of melodies that, that would actually suit that, what kind of uh, time signatures will suit that. So all those factors can kind of come into play at that point of time. Jace, what is your Riyaz routine? My Riyaz, there has been no routine of Riyaz throughout my life. There are times when I do not play the guitar for months if I do not have shows. But, uh, but the thing is that I love playing. I remember when I was a child or when I was in college, I used to play probably for 12 hours continuously. Okay, and not because I wanted to do Riyaz, because I enjoyed it. So that's why I say that please do not force yourself to play. Play it only if you're enjoying it, because if you force yourself to play, then probably the expression may not come uh, come out uh, towards the end. So ultimately, we want the expression. Um, okay, Viplav Vishal again. Uh, why is there a harmony around your notes always? It's quite unique. Notes sound 
uh, as if there is a whole bunch of orchestra supporting it. Okay, there is there is a reason behind uh, behind this because uh, uh, initially when I started playing and I, I got uh, swayed by Indian classical music, my uh, way to develop my uh, way of playing was to play solo. And to play solo, I had to use the open strings to fill up the 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 sound of the guitar as a drone, like you have in a tanpura, right? So when I'm playing a say this is my D, you are C, uh, but if you are playing the so you are playing as a drone the first and the fifth, right? So that drone. Now, if there is one particular note going on, if I if you play any other note with it, it becomes a harmony, right? Uh, unless and until you are playing the same note. But the moment you are playing more than uh, one note, uh, it becomes a harmony. So therefore, I guess it always sound a bit. Um, as if you are listening to certain harmonies. I think so, and at times I do use certain harmonies also while I'm playing. So uh, that is another question. Um, uh, and you said that if the, as if there is a whole bunch of orchestra supporting it. Well, that's a compliment, I must say, that if you think that it's a whole one bunch of orchestra. Um, Rajdeep Saha, how this note of even major chord like E sounds so beautiful. Is it just a feel of any formula to choose from the notes of E major scale? I don't understand this uh, question too much, Rajdeep. Uh, how this notes, how these notes of even major chord like E sounds so beautiful? Well, any chord sounds beautiful. I do not know what you mean by this. So since I do not know if you can send me the questions one once again and let me tell you one thing if anybody is interested very seriously so to pursue uh, any kind of uh, guidance from me uh, i am extremely open to it uh, you can write to me but only if you are serious about it write to me uh, on my email which is very simple it is sushmit sushmit is without an h s u s m i t dot IO as an Indian Ocean. So susmith, S U S M I T dot IO at gmail.com. Right. So um, a lot of questions I would not be answer, uh, uh, be able to answer. You have to type out those answers. So it'll be better to speak. So uh, once we connect, we will see exactly at what level are you asking these questions. And therefore, I will choose exactly which questions and who I should be speaking to more often. Right. Uh, How should a beginner guitarist start composing on guitar? Firstly, a beginner guitarist should learn how to, get to play the guitar properly and then try and compose something. You can compose songs without learning to play uh, the guitar or, or any other instrument, but you might be a bit limited in choosing the number of notes and uh, how you go about it. So learning, uh, whether you learn it yourself through practice, self-practice, uh, or you learn it uh, through uh, another master or a teacher, that is completely up to you. But uh, please don't try and compose before on the guitar before you've learned to play the guitar. <clears throat> In fact, people who have learned to play the guitar, I keep telling them when they're composing, not to be the slave of the guitar because their level of proficiency on the guitar is probably not good enough. And therefore, if it is not good enough, then you restrict your compositional abilities, right? Uh, how different is uh, the to play with Western? This I've already uh, answered. Your acoustic sounds uh, like nylon. Okay. How would that be possible? I myself do not know that. So. Uh, Rajdeep Saha is asking me, your acoustic sounds like nylon, uh, how would that be possible? I don't know. <laughs> I really do not know. Probably because I tune it one whole lot lower and therefore it sounds a bit mellower than uh, the normal uh, uh, 
um, uh, normal steel string guitar or metal string guitar. I, I personally think the uh, nylon string guitar sounds extremely different and especially people who play the nylon string, the, the technique of playing it is extremely, extremely, extremely different than mine. But uh, anyways, uh, Tunir Ghosh. Tunir Ghosh is asking me, your signal chain, uh, what brings about the sonorous sound? Is it only from the guitar? Okay, signal chain. Signal chain, I uh, will be... I won't be able to show it to you, but uh, all I can tell you that I'm going to be honest about it. Uh, I use an equalizer because every um, amp has a different uh, frequency range and uh, also the distribution is different. And therefore, I have to use an equalizer to get the right kind of EQ uh, uh, tone for my guitar. And all I'm using right now is uh, a reverb. And very little delay. The delay is actually almost not there. So it's an equalizer and a reverb. If you if you uh, want to know exactly what I'm using. Mm. Visme Patel. Visme Patel. Hello, sir. I am music producer, uh, and my cue is can VST plugins can replace live instruments in 2020. Ha. So I think uh, grammatically, I mean, there, there's something wrong. I mean, can VST plugins uh, replace live instruments? Well, I'm sure. Now, uh, uh, VST plugins, if you, if, you, if you ask me, if you want to create sounds which do not sound like another acoustic instrument, which can be done, which can be done. Pink Floyd did it, and and so so effectively. Uh, a whole lot of people who have uh, actually used uh, this uh, very very effectively. Uh, if you are asking me whether it can whether VST sound can actually replace, uh, say, a violin player or a guitar player, uh, the programmer has to be extremely knowledgeable and skillful to be able to do that. Because to be able to get, because nowadays you. Uh, you are getting um, the original sounds of different instruments, but somehow it still does not sound the same. But at times I've seen that there are drummers who have uh, been able to use uh, VST sounds and make things sound exactly like the drum kit. Because these are actually sampled sounds from the, from the drum kit. And, but, but, the, but, 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 but you have to be a very skillful programmer then. Uh, Mr. Raju Sikh. Oh, no, Muhammad Raju Sikh. Uh, sir, will you please tell me about your amp processor pedals? I just talked about the processor and pedals. For my practice sessions, I normally use the Roland Cube, but uh, just a few days back, that conked off. It did not really conk off, but it was giving a very jarring kind of a sound. Uh, so I have uh, used a kind of a small PA unit that I use when I am uh, practicing with the band and the vocalists, and probably a couple of more things get used. Uh, through that amp because it has got four channels. So I'm using that. So I've used my equalizer to be able to get something very close to what I get from the uh, Roland Cube. Uh, otherwise, when I go live, I normally like to use in, in India, I like to use the Roland uh, Jazz Chorus, JC120. And uh, when I am tra traveling abroad, I think, to, uh, I think the best amp that I have gone through for my acoustic guitar was the Trace Elliott, no doubt about it. That that company does not exist anymore. Uh, and there was another uh, company in the US, it was called the California Blonde. And the California Blonde, there was a smaller amp which I did not like, but there was a big amp which came, uh, which was like, I do not know what wattage or whatever. Uh, all I remember that the, 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 the subwoofer of that particular amp was facing sideways and not in front. But that uh, amp also gave me a fantastic sound. So these are the sounds that I really like. Now, there are lots of brilliant uh, electric guitar amps, but it does not suit my uh, acoustic guitar sound because the acoustic guitar has a much larger frequency range than the electric guitar. Right. So... I which DAW you use for recording music? 
this is a question for uh, sound engineers and not for me. Uh, I am not a sound engineer, uh, so I depend heavily on sound engineers to help me record. Uh, Yashashri Uchil. Yashashri Uchil, uh, with respect to the Jhala drone, do you usually use open strings? Uh, are these fretted notes as well? Uh, if yes, how does one include slides and hammers, hammer-ons in the melody without the drone limiting limiting one is? I do not know. Anyways, uh, well, there are at times when I do uh, harmonic uh, notes. Uh, I'll, I'll show you something. Uh, uh, if I if I'm if I'm playing something. Uh, these uh, uh, kind of uh, things that I also use. Now, while I'm doing it to, to also use the hammering technique, everything cannot be done together. It's almost like somebody once asked me, you know, somebody uh, uh, told him that I actually, uh, while playing a particular number within the number, uh, my string broke and uh, I actually, while playing, I actually replaced the string and continued playing. I told him that it's impossible, nobody on earth can do that. But you see, B.B. King had done that. B.B. King did it because he was not the only player, uh, only guitar player. So what he did, he kept singing while he was fixing the guitar string. And <clears throat> once he had done that, he went back to guitar playing. But he was not playing the guitar while he was changing the, str changing the string. But he did it within one number. You'll be able to see it on YouTube. Uh, thus, the Shantik zero one. Can we have some insight into your strumming pattern? Uh, well, I myself, you know, when other people see me uh, uh, strum, they tell me, okay, you are using this technique and that technique. But when I am uh, lost in my playing, frankly speaking, I do not get to analyze my own playing. All I can say is my. Uh, my way of holding the pick is probably a bit unorthodox. Normally, people will, will hold it like this, but I normally tend to hold it like this, right? So, all I can say is that watch some of my videos, probably you'll be able to get uh, what it is. But if you ask an orthodox player and people who teach music how to use the spectrum, um, they will probably throw me out of the class. Uh, any other questions that I may ask? Is that a question? Uh, well, the, the guitar that I'm playing is definitely one of, the, one of the finest guitars that I've ever laid my hands on. It is uh, made by somebody called David Murray. Uh, he was running this Dehradun guitar company in Dehradun, but uh, unfortunately things did not go very well. He had to leave the country and um, well, I would still go to say that he's one of the finest guitar makers on earth. Yeah. Uh, so I do not know exactly where he's based. He's from the US. I know that, but uh, somebody told me he's probably set shop in in uh, Thailand, but I'm not very sure because I did write to him a few uh, a couple of months back, but I never got a reply. Uh, respect to the Jaya, I, I, uh, guitar. Thank you, sir. Thank you for listening to me. Can you play a bit from Neptune's Dance? That's one of my absolute favorites. Without the band, uh, I won't be able to play it now. Asked for it before I uh, say goodbye. I will just play the opening notes for that. <laughs>
on that note, uh, thank you so much to all of you for being there. And uh, um, thanks to Songdu. And all I can say that I have done these three completely free sessions. Uh, next time I come live, I will definitely make it a paid concert or a paid session. Uh, and I would request all of you to support every artist, musicians or any other artist, uh, by buying these tickets to listen to them. Because I can tell you this much, that after this lockdown, we do not know when we are going to go live. And we musicians earn our money only through live performances. So support all live musicians. Do see them live on the net, but please pay for it. And it is absolutely necessary for the artist's survival. Right? Uh, thank you so much once again. And uh, well, hope to hear from you. Otherwise, and if I have not been able to answer any questions, uh, then I will ask Songdu Jotsna, who has been of ex immense help uh, from Songdu, uh, to send me all these questions. If I have not answered anything, I'll try and type out those answers to send it to you, or else we can uh, we can communicate through my email ID. You can come to my Facebook. Uh, although I'm not very active, but if people start writing regularly, probably I will. But only sensible questions. Thank you so much. Good day.